once you all are here, you, you probably know a lot about Kim. Maybe you've seen some of these pictures before. What I want to do is show, or, you know, give you a little of, of the story behind those pictures. This is what Kim looks like from um, a satellite. It's uh, it's about half an hour's flight from the south lawn of the White House to the helipad. Lower left is the helipad there. And uh, this is the president's residence up there. Everything is very rusty. At least it was about that. Um, that's Aspen Lodge. There's a swimming pool. There's three short holes for golf there. I, I never saw anybody use it. I think that was really in there for Ike. And this is the map of the uh, of the place. This circle here is about a mile. I'm not sure. I think this was when they arrived at Camp David. Oh, and this was the first time they met uh, going in for their trilateral, well, bilateral, trilateral meetings. This was... Uh, in Carter's little den there. And I was shooting that with a super wide lens. Um, and my back was against the wall. You can get an idea of how small the place was. And I had been having issues with the president and access. He didn't want to give us access. Um, I'd shoot a picture and he'd give me the look. And that was my, my, my cue to leave. And after a while, I just, after the first picture, I would head for the door. And one time he said to me, um, well, I, I had said to him, I said, Mr. President, your library is going to be filled with um, handshake pictures. And true to form, he just looked at me and turned and went back to his desk. And either that afternoon or maybe the next day, I was in there and he said, Billy, maybe you were right. That was it. So I started pushing and pushing and pushing, and thank God I did, or else you wouldn't have these pictures. Um, we shot a lot of pictures, and the second or third day, the prime minister walked up to me, and his face was right here, looking up at me. He said, what are you doing with all these pictures? I said, uh, would you like some? My lab guys, I could hear them groaning. So every day... I did 12 eight by tens on 11 by 14 sheets of paper, put them in a little you know, folio and gave them to both he and President Sadat. And um, he always said to me, you may be looking at this. This is in the main, main Aspen Lodge with uh, President Sadat. It was, was kind of difficult. Uh, the light out there was very mottled. Um, so it made for a, hard to shoot pictures. Um, this was on the front porch of uh, the, uh, uh, the cabin where he stayed with his staff. I believe this was the first day when everybody was getting checked in. Uh, the, uh, these are all of the Egyptians who are. The guy on the far left with his arms crossed, that's John Simpson. He was head of the president's detail. Camp David is run like a uh, Navy ship. It's a it's a commander, sometimes a lieutenant Navy commander, who is the commanding officer. And they have sailors up there doing this, that, and the other thing. But it is secured by the Marine Corps. It's very secure. This is um, this is Big Nabrzhinski. One night, I, I, was, I was just walking by, and uh, they, they were sitting on the, uh, the front porch. And I have read different accounts so I think there were three games played, and I've heard he won two, he won one, he won two, he won, and so nobody knows really for sure, but they had a good time. This was at, uh, at uh, Gettysburg on the right here, Azer Weissman and the uh, President Sadat. Sam Lewis, who was the ambassador to Israel then, and who later became president of the U.S. Institute of Peace. And everybody behind him is security. This, uh, the guy up, uh, security agent up in the back under the stone thing, it was his first day on the presidential detail. 
he told me later, he said, you know, if something went wrong, they're going to blame it all on me. But but nothing went wrong. It was uh, So they took them over there and showed them the battlefield where in a couple of days they had 51,000 casualties. A lot of loss of lives. Amy Carter in the front here transfixed them in cannon, I guess. Moshe Diane right here. Defense minister. Yeah, yeah. And this was... Uh, since they, uh, since Begin and Sadat weren't talking face to face, they would meet with the Americans, and the Americans would meet with the um, uh, Egyptians. And in the picture here, we have Cyrus Vance, Secretary of State. This is uh, this is Bigner Brzezinski, and this is Walter Mondale's the the back of his head here. And again, this is a really small room. Little shuttle diplomacy, a lot, a lot of golf carts. Um, both uh, Begin and Sadat had heart problems, and they were uh, a morning walk was prescribed each day. So they wanted to keep these two away from each other. So the way they did it, um, let's see, yeah, Begin was in this uh, cabin here, and Sadat was in this one. So the security agent would go up to uh, Begin's door and say, we're ready for you, sir. And he'd come out and he'd start walking around. When they got about there, they would do the same thing with Sadat. So they were following about two or 300 yards behind each other. And if they got too close, one of the agents in the trailing party would say, oh, my God, look at that. I thought that bird was extinct. So everybody would be looking up at the trees at these birds. Then he'd get word bring them up. And this is in the main living room there. I think uh, Brzezinski came with that one shirt. What? Last, lasted for three days. Yeah. Hamilton Jordan in the uh, foreground here. Who was, I think at one time, I believe that Hamilton was one of the youngest chiefs of staff at the White House. Yeah. We did a little uh, bicycle uh, diplomacy. When I would shoot this picture or a picture like this that we thought we might release, I'd jump on a bike and head up to our photo lab, which had been set up in the um, the Navy dispensary. He kept stealing my bike. So I, I don't know if you can read it, but it says White House Photo Team. And you see what I did with the seat on it? I ran that seat up as far as it would go. He tried to steal it once, and he almost emasculated himself. Well, um, so he did, didn't didn't try it anymore. Both Sadat's team and Begin's team were a dream to work with. I could walk him to his place, and his security team would know who I was just by you know cameras hanging on me, and they they just show me in and. He'd be sitting on a couch or something or something like this, doing his homework, studying, whatever. And uh, and when I got what I needed, I left. But I was never ushered back out. They were late. Begging was the same way. Some days were good. Some days were bad. Uh, and this was, I think, the night before the decision was made. And then immediately after that, Carter didn't even know that this meeting was taking place. This was taking place in Bagan's uh, cabin. And I think he was giving Sadat uh, something carved from olive wood. I'm not quite sure what it was. But it was at this meeting, I am almost sure, that they, they let it be known that the agreement was going to happen. Everybody, when they checked in, they got a little Camp David jacket. I got one that came to right about there. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, so um, so that was it. Um, did anybody see the play Camp David? It was a couple, couple, two or three years ago. In the beginning of this play, and the play was terrific, by the way. If you ever have the chance, if they ever put it back on the road, go and see it. One of the first things in the play, 
Megan Sadat and Carter walk to the front of the stage and they're talking. And then they start to turn around. And from the back of the theater, you hear, how about a picture? It's me, but I didn't yell at them. Um, so they turned around and, and I shot, shot a picture. And uh, in the play, there's a scene where uh, Bagan is sitting in a real dimly lit den and Carter came in with an envelope and he said, oh, here, I signed those pictures for your grandkids, for David, Ariel. And what I wanted to write was your grandfather and President Sadat and I made peace at Camp David. But do it. Big and handed in the envelope, said, I'll sign. I still get a little uh, for clanked. It was quite a moment. So anyway, then we went back the next day in helicopters that were stuffed with people who weren't supposed to be on there. Um, and we got back to the White House. The signing, of course, was in the East Room, and they did a signing again uh, on the North Lawn, which is kind of unusual. Um, yeah, and the Institute of Peace, somebody is donating copies of the agreement with my photograph up there, and it will hang outside the board, boardroom at the Institute of Peace. So, uh, yeah, and this was the book. If you get a chance, you'll see all of these pictures in that book. So, that's what I got. So, thank you for having me.